Capital A will not proceed with the 500 million ringgit club facility under Dana Jame National's Prihatin Guarantee Scheme. In a filing to Bursa Malaysia, Capital A's Board of Directors and Management announced that the low-cost carrier, which is in the midst of a recapitalization exercise, is unable to accept and or fulfil certain conditions. It is now exploring other available debt financing alternatives with acceptable terms suitable to the company operations and financing requirements. According to the filing, the conditions included the requirements of a joint and several guarantees as security to Dana Jamin from founders Tan Sri Tony Fernandez and Datuk Kamaruddin Meranun. The PN17 company also needed to submit and obtain Bursa Malaysia Securities approval for its regularization plan and remedy its shareholder equity to be above 40 million ringgit and 25% of its share capital. Alternatively, it would need to obtain a time extension to provide the regularization plan from Bursa for the matching tenure of the Dana Jamin facility. Former Bursa Malaysia Executive Director and CEO Datuk Yusli Muhammad Yusof passed away at the age of 63 earlier this afternoon after a battle with cancer. The Edge learned this from multiple sources. Yusli was the Executive Director and CEO of Bursa, then known as the Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange, from April 10, 2004 to March 31, 2011. His latest roles included the Chairman of Mudajaya Group and President of the Malaysia Asian Institute of Corporate Governance, MICG. He also held directorships in FGV Holdings, AirAsia X, Westports Holdings and KPJ Healthcare. MICG CEO Roshni Jayantilal confirmed the news of Yusli's passing and said it is a great loss to MICG and Malaysia. She told TheEdgeMarkets.com that Yusli was a strong corporate governance advocate and a humble gentleman, a great mentor and leader that many admired and respected. Private investor and former investment banker Ian Yong, who worked with Yus Lee when the latter was the CEO of CIMB Securities, recalled him as being meticulous, very fair and professional. The government could pay up to 28 billion ringgit in subsidies this year, more than double the 11 billion ringgit it forked out in 2021, as oil prices surge amid the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz told the Dewan Rakyat today that benchmark Brent crude has been on an uptrend since the start of 2021. In January this year, prices reached 85 US dollars or about 356 ringgit per barrel, pushing monthly subsidies for petrol, diesel and LPG to more than 2 billion ringgit from 200 million ringgit in January 2021. Currently, consumers pay 2 ringgit and 5 cent per litre for on 95 petrol, but the actual cost has reached 3 ringgit 70 cent per litre this month. As for diesel, he said consumers are paying 2 ringgit 15 cent per litre at the pump, while the actual cost has exceeded 4 ringgit per litre. With global crude now at more than 100 US dollars per barrel, the highest level since 2014, Zafrol said total petrol, diesel and LPG subsidies are expected to exceed 2.5 billion ringgit a month. And should oil prices remain above 100 US dollars per barrel, total subsidies for the whole of 2022 could reach 28 billion ringgit. Zafrul added that the government is currently reviewing the subsidy mechanism for fuel as well as cooking oil. This is to ensure it is more targeted towards vulnerable households while optimising the government's financial resources. Embattled former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Razak has reportedly hired New York-based CARF Communications to provide strategic communications and media relations support. Citing a spokesperson for the firm, Virginia-based Political Influence reported that CARF will serve as a subcontractor to Najib's attorney Tanya Shavetti for an initial period of two months. This is, quote, to help ensure Najib Razak's actions and views are understood by US journalists 
journalists and presented accurately in any U.S. media coverage, including during the trial of Roger Ng, currently underway in the Eastern District of New York, unquote. Ng is the only Goldman Sachs banker to be tried in the 1MDB scandal. The report added that according to the Justice Department's filings, Carve will receive US$140,000 or about 586,110 ringgit for two months of work. According to Carve's website, it specialises in sophisticated corporate and financial communications, crisis and personal reputation management, litigation support and public affairs. UMW Holdings says its car sales volume last month was 10% higher at 23,853 vehicles from 21,657 units a year earlier as its automotive arm continued to ramp up car production to fulfil its encouraging outstanding order book. UMW Holdings via subsidiary UMW Toyota Motor is the assembler, marketer and exclusive distributor of Toyota and Lexus vehicles in the country. It also owns a 38% stake in Perodua via UMW Automotive. In a statement, the group said UMW Toyota Motor and Perodua saw improved sales in February compared with a year prior. UMW Toyota Motor saw car sales volume rise 26.8% to 6,432 units, with the Vios Hilux and Corolla Cross its best-selling models. Meanwhile, Perodua registered a car sales volume of 17,421 units in February, 5.1% higher year-on-year, driven by demand for the MyV, Axia and Beza. UMW Holdings President and Group CEO Datuk Ahmad Fuad Kenali said the sales tax exemption in Malaysia and the introduction of all new and facelift models should drive sales in the first half of this year. At the close, UMW Holdings' share price rose 0.98% to 3 ringgit 8 sen for a market value of about 3.59 billion ringgit. <laughs> 